Well, it's uh, another day at Retro Power. Um, one thing that sort of this closure time uh, due to the, the COVID thing uh, has done is allowed us a bit of time to think about, you know, ways we can improve and things we can do differently here. Um, and one thing we've always wanted to do is, is do more video content. And we can see that there's an appetite for it. You know, people are always saying, oh, do a video about this, do a video about that. And we've always said, you know, it's very difficult because A, we're paying for the professional editing on those videos. It's quite time consuming, sort of doing different takes and we don't want to slow down the flow of work. So, but a lot of people have said, oh, it doesn't matter about the quality. We just want to see what's going on. So we thought, well, maybe we'll try that. We've got a couple of different cameras. Um, so we're trying to film stuff a lot more as we're actually doing it. And then hopefully with a bit of luck once a week, um, myself or my brother, um, we'll do a quick walk around talking about some of the things we've been working on. Um, and then we'll be able to show you the, the footage of those things being done. So I thought I'd start in one of the lesser spotted areas of retro power which is our engine build room because we've been spending a bit of time uh, in here this week. A um, couple of things going on. Trev's been doing a fair bit on this Duratec. We're building a Cortina at the minute, which you probably saw in a previous episode. Um, and it's having this Cosworth Duratec in it. It's a 2.5 litre, um, sorry, 2.3 litre, 250 horsepower Cosworth built Duratec. Now, it's pretty tidy, but it was bought by the owner as a used engine. Um, albeit claiming to be you know in perfect condition but on you know sensibly he said let's have let's strip some of it apart and just make sure everything's okay so we, we had the sump off that to check the bearings which is not as easy as it would sound because being the cosworth tri sumped one all the pump mechanisms built into the sump um so and there's a there's like a, a girdle in there as well so pulling all of that apart is actually a bit more of an undertaking than you might think because you have to take the timing cover off you have to take the crank pulley off but anyway we've done all of that um Checked out everything. Everything looked pretty much fine. We put new bearings in it because it would be stupid not to um, with everything already apart. Um, but it looked good, so that's now all back together and ready to go in the Cortina, which is in the latter stages of paint. The other thing we're sort of working on at the moment is the 2JZ that's going to go in the uh, Mark II Jag. So we've stripped the we stripped the engine down. There was some damage, which I'll mention in the next Utah episode. Um, and we were going to need to bore and get new pistons for the bottom end. However, I just thought, because we're ordering a lot of parts from Toyota, I thought, well, we'll just see if they still do a complete block. Turns out they do a complete um, short engine, basically. The bottom end, crank, rods, pistons, all built for a not ridiculous price. So we've just got a complete new bottom end from Toyota, basically, uh, along with a load of other parts, all the things like oil pump, water pump, all the usual bits. So they're here, so we're just about ready to start the rebuild on that. Um, the blocks in the booth, I'll show you that in a minute, and just, just had paint. Um, if we take a wander out this way, uh, it's been a good week actually for things arriving. We just had a set of wheels made for uh, Project Kaiser 2, which is our Mercedes W111 Coupe project. We've had a complete bespoke billet set of wheels made um, by a company in the States called Evo D Industries. They arrived today and that's just spectacular looking things, so we're excited to get those on the car. Um, we take a stroll out here. James is standing here. James has been doing a bit of uh, quite a lot of CAD stuff this week, and, and the 3D printer's been busy as well. We've been doing a lot of interior work for the, the Kaiser Mercedes, so things like the um, tweeter pods, speaker grill inserts. Uh, what else have we made, James? Um, there was something else. The oh god, I can't, oh the it was the rack dummy rack mounts for the uh, Mark II Jag. Uh, but yeah, basically, 3D printers have been busy printing out various interior parts, which we're now in the process of upholstering. So, for instance, the parcel shelf, we've made the, the main shelf um, in an MDF board, which has been leathered um, by Dean, our upholsterer upstairs. And then we've, we've basically 3D printed a speaker grill insert, which will be wrapped in speaker grill cloth, but it just is there to hold the cloth and stop it sagging down, you know, if it, if it stretches over time. So they've just been doing it at a minute. Uh, that's the actual casing for the Mark II Jag project. So that's just come back from being blasted, zinc metal sprayed and powder coated. Um, and the front cross member, which is over there. Uh, we'd mosey on through this way. What else have we been doing? Mucking about with cars. Scott! <laughs> so, uh, Scott and Nat have been doing a lot of time on this um, at the moment. 
which is a Morris Miner project that we'll go into in more detail in another video. Um, but essentially, to create a Morris Miner that is a reasonably modern driving experience, we're getting rid of all of the Morris Miner, um, designing on CAD and fabricating our own tubular backbone chassis, um, which in turn takes uh, Mazda MX-5 front and rear subframes, uh, it's a Mazda MX-5 gearbox and we've used the Mazda MX-5 backbone to kind of dynamically tie together all of the, the front and rear end. Um, and then we're using a, a crate Omex built Ford ZTEC, uh, 2 litre, 200 horsepower on individual throttle bodies and all the usual bits of kit, um, Omex ECU. So uh, pretty exciting project, lots of metal work, a lot of design work. Um, so uh, keeping Nat and uh, Scott very busy on that one at the moment. Potter over here, uh, well, we've got the Mark II Jag, which is this, we've li I've literally just signed off metal work completion basically on this. We're just paint strippering the roof because we didn't want to blast the roof when we blasted it because it's a big expanse, easy to distort. Um, that's going to be moving into the blast room very shortly to be blasted and zinc sprayed on the underside. And we've got the Cortina, which has basically been going through the uh, prep for paint process. So once we've done the um, blasting and the metal work, well, the metal work, blasted it, zinc sprayed it. Uh, we epoxy primed the shell at that stage to seal it all in, then do all the block sanding, filler work. I think I'd already said that. Um, and then Gaz just does a, basically a masking marathon of multi-stage masking. So we uh, do the underside in uh, a urethane coating. It's actually a, a, a UPOL product called Raptor, um, which we tint body coloured. Uh, so we do the underside in that. Um, we also do the areas of the interior that aren't going to be visibly on, that aren't going to be on show in the final car just because it's a tougher material to put under something like carpet where it, you know, it's going to be shuffling around a bit when the car's in use and it, you want a nice tough material under that. It also gives a bit of sound deadening as well. Um, then the kind of that layer of masking is peeled off uh, and the visible surfaces are then, are then painted in the same finish as the final exterior finish. So that's things like on this one, it's the bulkhead at the back, the inner arch tubs are going to be on display, the, the roll cage, the seat mounts, some strengtheners that we put into the floor, uh, which are quite nice. They've got punched, swaved holes in, so that was nice to leave them painted. Um, the A pillars and various other bits, the gear stick um, tower, uh, engine bay done at the same time, and also inside the boot. And then with that lot done, the whole car is now kind of sealed in a non-porous coating. So we'll do a wet sanding on the final, this epoxy primer that's on the outside here. Um, and then that'll be the final step before we get this final paint finish on all of the remaining exterior parts of the car, um, which we're all really looking forward to. Uh, and then it's going to be full steam ahead on getting the, the rebuilding process. Um, there's a couple of things I'll show you in the booth. I'm not going to go in there now because the light's not on, but uh, we've been painting some parts as well, like the fuel tank for this, suspension struts, various bits that aren't really suitable to be powder coated. Um, so we use a, a urethane based paint on those parts. Um, so that's all in there. And also while we were doing that, we painted the new Toyota um, block assembly. So we basically mask all of the machined faces and then set it up in the booth and paint it with the same urethane based paint finish. Um, and that then means we can get that in the engine room and ready for the build. Uh, so call it a day at that. And hopefully if things go well, I can manage one of these every week. <laughs> and you have to let us know whether you think it's uh, a load of old rubbish or it's interesting and you want to see more. Bye.